In this video, we're going to put together the taper attachment. And here it is. Binding lever, connecting bar, bed and swivel bar, tie rod bracket. Here is a photograph of all the parts. A fair amount of castings and bolts and brackets, bushings and bearings. These two pieces are the heart of the taper attachment. This is the swivel bar. It goes on top and one end is delineated in degrees taper and the other is inches per foot. They are tacked together and swivel with a half inch pin and the base is stationary generally and the top portion swivels to create the appropriate taper. Both these pieces are almost identical and they each have a slide portion with 45 degrees on each side. And here you can see how the swivel works. This is the back side of the saddle and you can see the taper attachment bracket is attached here with two half inch bolts and two locating pins and a place for two cap screws to attach the connecting bar. There are two thrust bearings. They're both identical. They are installed on either end of the cross feed sleeve, which I'll show you in a second. I'm going to put that sleeve on temporarily so it can hold up the bracket while I'm putting the bolts on. The sleeve has two holes, one in each end, as you can see, for oilers, and a cut in the middle to accept a taper pin. And each end has a hole cut to fit perfectly over the end of the cross feed screw. These are two hardened pins that help locate the bracket. I'm going to seat them into the saddle and then we'll slide the bracket over the top. The sleeve we just put on needs to slide back and forth in this bracket. So as the bracket gets put on, you got to make sure there's no binding here, which I thought I might have trouble with it, but I didn't. It worked out just fine. Slide the bracket in place, put the bolts on, and then tighten them down. back and forth on the bolts so the bracket slides over those pins evenly. The sleeve needs to slide back and forth in that bracket, which it does. Now that I have the bracket on, I'm going to back off that sleeve and then pull back on the crossfeed screw so we can assemble the rest of the taper attachment. Before I cover up the bracket, I want to show you where the bracket gib goes and the gib screw. It's tough to see this and I didn't get a very good photograph of it. Slide on the bed and the swivel that we put together earlier and then put on the gib and the gib screw. Next goes on the slide block. It slides along the swivel and also has a gib and accommodates the binder stud. The binder stud has two holes in it. One big one for the sleeve that we just put on and another for a taper pin to hold it on the sleeve. Once the binder stud is in place, then you can slide that sleeve on. The sleeve goes through the bracket 
and through the binder stud and then the cross feed screw end goes through the sleeve. Now make sure that taper pin hole is lined up so it secures the binder stud to the sleeve. Oh, you can't see that very well. Here is a reenactment from a different camera angle. We will drive that taper pin home later. Now we are going to put on the second thrust bearing, a collar, and then two clinch nuts. So the sleeve remains stationary, kind of, and it is surrounded by two sets of bearings on either end. Slide on the collar. Then locked in place by these two nuts that are clinched together. Tighten the nuts up to take the play out of the bearings. So the cross slide screw can spin inside the sleeve and the sleeve then can move the cross feed as it follows the taper dictated by the swivel bar. Okay, this is the approximate range of motion the taper attachment has, three or four inches. The cross feed screw is made up of two sections, the front and the rear section, and they both slide together and have a range of motion of about three or four inches. But their rotary motion is locked together by this keyway in the rear section and a key in the front section. Here you can see that interplay between the front and rear sections of the crossfeed screw. As I move that binder stud, the full range of the taper attachment. I know that's a little hard to follow. Next goes on the collar screw that clamps down the swivel bar to the bed. And there is also a cap screw underneath the bed on each end that prevents the bed from being driven off the bracket. This is the slide lock gib and the gib screw. They go in just like the others did. Then the gib screw is locked in place with a bronze shoe and a set screw. This is the cast iron connecting bar and it is attached with two cap screws. It firmly connects the cross slide to the binder stud. This is a thin metal chip guard, and I'm told that these are pretty rare, actually. They uh, apparently, over the course of time, get lost or taken off and never get put back on, so I'm happy to have it. This is the binding lever, and when tightened down, firmly connects the slide block to the cross feet. We're not going to tighten down yet. Well, we're almost done. This is the tie rod that is screwed into the end of the bed. And this is the tie rod bracket with the bracket clamp. There is a set screw and a jam nut 
that allows you to position this bracket so it's nice and flat against the bottom of the bed. A couple of washers are installed and the tie rod bracket is bolted to the tie rod. The tie rod is a clamp that clamps the entire taper attachment firmly onto the bed of the lathe. It is not designed to slide on the bedway. Matter of fact, when the taper attachment is not in use, I plan to have this thing up off the bedway. Now I'm pretty sure I have this thing together correctly. We'll go ahead and drive home that taper pin. Now when the taper attachment is not in use, it's just a 50 pound appendage that sticks out the back of the saddle. It doesn't do anything. As I use the cross feed screw, it just moves just like a normally would. Just as a simple demonstration, I'm going to lock down the bracket and then lock down the binding lever and then set a taper and then slide the saddle. As the saddle slides across the bed, the swivel bar forces the saddle to move. And that's what creates a taper cut in the work. All done. Very nice.